Hello and welcome to the Skin Lovers Unite podcast, your source for all things skin science, skincare and business. I'm your host Kelly, otherwise known as Skin Queen, and I'm so excited for you to sink your teeth into today's episode. All right, today's video slash podcast episode is a little bit of a last minute idea. And usually I plan everything out. I put it on a post-it note. I stick it up on my camera so I can read the dot points. However, I just feel like this is a very necessary and value adding episode that I wanted to do because I've seen a couple of people talk about this recently and I'm like, oh my gosh, does nobody know this? (laughs) Okay, so let's get on with it. So today's podcast episode is going to be talking about attracting and understanding your ideal target audience. Now, this is something that I've spoken about in my business for years. And often when I say this, a lot of people tell me, I don't know who my client avatar is. I don't know who my ideal client is, who my ideal target audience is. I have no idea when it comes to those things. And it became apparent today when I did a post in my Skin Lovers Unite Facebook group which by the way, if you are not in there, join it. I'll pop the link below in the show notes. Um, But I did a post talking about where I get my content ideas from. And I've been playing in the world of TikTok at the moment. And I wanted to be known for being a skin expert on TikTok. So I'm creating lots of content that I know consumers will be searching for and basically answering questions that all of my friends and family and people on Instagram are always asking me. And I shared that tip inside of my Skin Lovers Unite group. I shared the post and it said, if you don't know, if you struggle to come up with content ideas and you don't know how to get content ideas, then go and ask your friends and your family what they don't know about skincare and what they get confused of when it comes to skin, looking after their skin and skincare and just see what questions they ask you and jot them all down in a note section on your phone and that becomes all of your content ideas. And somebody commented on there saying, oh my gosh, that's so simple and so genius. And it kind of humbled me for a little bit because I have always strived to understand my target audience. So for me, as a business owner who serves the professional beauty industry, so when I say the professional beauty industry, that is beauty business owners, that is skin therapists, that is beauty therapists, that students who are still in the uh, beauty industry learning you know, their diploma or whatever it is that they're doing, those are the people that I'm wanting to attract in my business. And so the work that I've done around that to help me with my messaging, my marketing, every little single bit of content I put out, every program I put out really comes from a place of me understanding my target audience. So what I'm actually looking for is, you know, what are some of the things that they want in their life? Do they want a really successful beauty business? Do they want to learn how to attract more clients? They want to become more confident when it comes to talking about skin with the clients? Do they want to become more confident during consultations? I also know their challenges and their struggles and their pain points. And this is purely through one, my Facebook group, but two, the conversations that I have with people in the industry all the time. This might happen organically in person. It might happen on my Instagram messages. It could happen from me talking to them on Facebook Messenger as well but also for me looking at all the different Facebook groups to see what questions people within the professional beauty industry are always asking. Not only do I want to understand, you know, their struggles, their challenges, their pain points, their pleasure points, but yeah, I want to understand what their pleasure points are. What are their goals? What do they want to achieve? Where are they now versus where do they want to be? And I fully understand my target audience inside and out. And that really helps me to lead every decision in my business. Now, another thing that's just popped up in my Facebook group, and I'm going to read it out. It's a post that says, I just want to know what you feel are the most important types of facials to have on your menu. Once again, a very valid question, but this is being asked in a group of professionals. And oftentimes when beauty business owners are creating a treatment menu, they're not doing it with their target audience in mind. So my response here was, I would say the most important ones would depend on what sort of clients you want to attract. So if you want young acne sufferers, then do those sorts of facials. If you want mature age clients, do anti-aging facials. If you want bougie high-end clients, 
then do bougie high-end facials. Think about the target audience you want to attract and go deep in getting to know them and what you want, what they want, sorry. This is so important for anybody with a business, not just in the beauty industry. If you are a hairdresser and you have a hair salon, if you are a PT and you have a gym and you do personal training sessions, if you have an e-commerce business, it is so important to get into the mind of your ideal buyer, client, customer, and target audience. So I really want you to sit down. I really want you to have a little bit of a think about who it is you're trying to attract. What do they do for work? How old are they? Do they have kids? Do they have pets? Do they drink wine? Do they drink coffee? Are they a fitness fanatic? What sort of money do they make? Do they work full time or are they retired and have 20 properties? Where do they live? What sort of lifestyle do they live? What do they spend their free time doing? What does their day look day to day? What does their week look day to day? And I know initially, as I say this, you might be like, how the fuck am I supposed to know? (laughs) But this is the importance of doing client research. And you can really start to get into the mind of your ideal client by talking to people who are in that ideal client range. So this might involve talking to friends and family. This might involve having a look at different people's Instagram profiles. It might involve having a look at different Facebook groups to see what sort of things clients are actually struggling with. You can even look on YouTube. You can even look at answer the public to have a look at these sorts of questions that people are asking and answering. And you can also do a little bit of an assumption because generally people have a bit of stereotypes. Like for example, if you do want to attract acne clients in your clinic, chances are they're probably a little bit younger. They're probably anywhere from the age of 16 to 26, 27. They might be a uni student. They might be working part-time. They might not have a lot of spare cash to spend on facials and skincare all the time. They might spend their weekends going to music festivals and partying and drinking. But see how you can start to draw a little bit of a conclusion, a little bit of assumptions when you start to really drill down and think about who your target audience is. And honestly, when you start to do this, this is going to create a world of difference in your business because everything you do in your business is then going to be driven by the end consumer. Everything you do in your marketing is going to be driven by how you can add value to the end consumer. How can you actually help to educate and actually serve and position yourself as an expert to the end consumer? Because all too often I see so many people trying to do things to really please the professional beauty industry. So what I mean by that is say, for example, a new treatment comes out. I know hydrofacial is all the rage at the moment and lots of therapists want to jump on board that and bring that into their clinic. It is quite an investment, but at the same time, is that something that is really going to benefit your clients, benefit your target audience? And is that something that your target audience actually understands and wants to have as well? Whether you like to admit it or not, a lot of people, you know, live on social media. They live on Instagram. They live on TikTok. So have a look at what they are consuming because those are the sorts of things that they actually might want to go and have in clinic. So for example, I'm seeing a lot of people post about hydrofacial at the moment, but what I'm actually seeing on TikTok at the moment is lots of people going for lymphatic drainage facials. And I'm not seeing many clinics do that, although that just could be the algorithm and what's coming up on my feed. But you really need to sit down and be like, who do I want to attract? Because that is really going to determine everything in your business. For me, I am going to be opening a clinic this year. Fingers crossed it can be done by May. We've still got a source of location. We still have to do a fit out, all the rest, but I'm feeling really hopeful. But I know exactly who my target audience is now. And I'm creating content to serve them now. My target audience are going to be people who don't mind spending a little bit more money on a facial because they might work for themselves or they have a lot of investment properties. They are an influencer who's earning lots of money or they just want to enjoy spending money on themselves. It's a little bit more high end. So they might be purchasing a lot of designer. So to spend $300, $350 on a facial is going to be nothing to them but they want an experience. They don't want to just go and have another treatment like every other salon is offering. They want to go somewhere luxy and bougie and they want to have a full experience. When they walk into the salon, they want to be offered a sparkling water or a tonic water or a coffee from a coffee machine. 
They want to actually go somewhere where it's very high end, that it smells beautiful, it sounds beautiful, it looks beautiful, and they want to actually be pampered and have the full experience. It's going to be a destination. They want to do something as a one-off to really treat themselves, but they're going to enjoy it so much that it's going to be their monthly treat that they come back and have every month because they have the time to do that in their life and they also have the money to do that in their life. And so all of my marketing is going to be around that. It's going to be around that bougie, luxy, high end, because that's exactly who I'm trying to target. And that's exactly who I want to attract into my business. So that is something that I want you to go away and do. I really want you to sit down and think about who is your target audience? What sort of people do you want in your business? And then shape your business around that. Shape your treatment menu around that. Shape your pricing around that. Shape the way your clinic looks around that. Shape your bloody marketing around that because all too many times people do, you know, what everybody else is doing. And that's not the way to stand out in a sea of a busy beauty industry. All right. I think I'm going to continue to rant about this, but hopefully I've given you food for thought. This is something that I'm really passionate about because when you get this right, everything else in your business is just so much easier. All right. Love you. See you in the next episode.